I remember the time I went to Microsoft for the first time, Seattle. I'm there in the room and by a whole, whole room of people. And I thought to myself, man, I couldn't even apply to work in the cafeteria. I'm not even qualified to work in the cafeteria. Does that make sense? Yeah. All these people from Harvard, Stanford, Yale University, people in the front row that report directly to Bill Gates and Steve Ballmer. They're in the front row. They've been gone for two days. I mean, how did I end up here? And I look back and I retrace my steps in terms of mindset and mental toughness and focus of over a period of time of reading 10 pages a day. Taking one hour a day and committing to it, no matter what, to learn, to absorb, feed my mind. Realizing when I'm driving that the average Canadian over 19 years of age will spend approximately 500 hours per year driving in their automobile or on public transportation if they just listen to educational audio programs or audio books like audible.com, that over the course of a calendar year, it's 500 hours of training development, which is equivalent to a college or university semester of education. So that, if I just start doing this, and over a period of time, my life will change. Does that make sense? And so this is how you learn things. It, it, it's, it's doing things. And it's going to be uncomfortable when you first start doing it. People are going to notice things about you. There was times in my life where I would think to myself, man, I'd love to meet that person someday. I'd see them in a magazine, like a Fortune magazine or Success magazine, or see them on television. And I would put myself in the pit and put them on a pedestal. Anybody ever done this? Where you minimize yourself, put yourself in a pit, and you're on, you put them on a pedestal? I did that for a good majority of my life. I'd minimize myself, put myself in a pit, and put them on a pedestal. And that was my belief system. And then I realized that I could provide massive value. And it was that all of a sudden, people started calling me and emailing me and thinking to myself, these are people that I originally put on a pedestal. And now they're calling me to ask me for advice. Why? And what it was, it was all the things behind the scenes that I did by myself during the waking hours of my day. A gentleman taught me many years ago. He's passed away now. A lot of my mentors, a lot of my coaches are people you've never heard of. They're, they're, not, they're not the Tony Robbins or Brian Tracy's of the world. Those people are great. A lot of my mentors are people who come into my life that have, I met originally at the Rotary Clubs, Chamber of Commerce, YPO groups, different networking groups that have come into my life that are very low profile, far under the radar kind of people. And they'd pull me aside and they'd say, let's have a conversation. Just like Dan did tonight with what he did with the hot seat. And the gentleman, when he pulled me aside, he said to me, he said, Darren, he says, can I give you some feedback? I said, sure. He goes, success is, he goes, sit here for a minute. He goes, in your life, I, I didn't find to be emotional tonight. I, I'm a fairly logical kind of guy. It's kind of funny. But um, the thing is, that he said to me, he said, Darren, right now, you're out there trying to climb the, like the ladder. You know what I mean? Like the corporate ladder. You know, you got to go out there, get good grades, get good school, and then go out and become somebody, right? And he said something to me that changed my life. He goes, Darren, success is not something you go out in the world to pursue. He said, success is something you attract by the person you become. Think about that. Success is not something that you go out in the world to pursue. You'll wake up tomorrow and say, I got to hustle. I got to grind. I got to make phone calls. I got to do all this stuff. Go, 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 go. Networking meeting, this and this and that. You're out there pursuing something. Success is something you got to go out in the world to pursue. Does that make sense? And what it is, success is not something you go out in the world to pursue. Success is something you attract into your life by the person that you become. So you think when you get up tomorrow, what can you do differently to become the person that you want to become? What book will you read? What video will you watch? What website will you go to? Who will you follow on social media? I learned in the last couple of years with all these websites, all these people, all these gurus, all these mentors, all these experts, that I boil it down to three people now. And I filter out everybody else and I focus on three key people that influence me and advise me, kind of like an advisory board. And that's what I do. I don't have time to get all this information all the time from people now and things like that. So what I do is every couple weeks, I'll go and meet with a bunch of people at a table, and they'll sit around me and they brief. I learned this from Oprah. And they'll brief on what's going on. So in a one hour, hour and a half, I can get a lot of information that would take me hours to get and decipher over a course of a couple weeks. I can get it 90 minutes or less for a bunch of specialists or experts in that field. Does that make sense? So you're leveraging your time on what you're doing. It's a big, big difference in what you're doing. So the thing is you want to realize tonight is that 
one of the things to understand in terms of, of income is we go to networking events and people want to walk around and give you business cards and brochures and flyers. Is one of the things I was taught a number of years ago was to play the contribution game. And what the contribution game is when you wake up tomorrow, you think to yourself, how can I provide value in somebody else's <laughs> life and contribute to their life through a contribution game? Now, I used to be so scared when I was younger. I was scared to talk to girls. I was scared to prospect and network with people. I used to put pennies in my left pocket. And every time I talked to somebody, I'd transfer a penny to the other pocket. And I wouldn't go home at the night until the pennies were out of the left pocket into the right pocket. That's how I started. I didn't have the self-esteem or self-confidence. I started where the phone used to weigh 500 pounds. And I would do everything I could to avoid making telephone calls. Today, I can call anybody on anything. Because I've done it so many times. It doesn't bother me. Now, how you learn is by taking action. The fast way to do something is by taking action. It's going to be scary. It's going to be fearful. But it's taking action. The key thing is you've got to act in spite of fear. Act in spite of discomfort. Act in spite of worry. Act in spite of uncertainty. And you just keep taking action. And there will be days where you don't know what's going to happen. There will be times that you don't know what's going to, happen, what's going to go on. There will be days that you have a certain organized plan, and it doesn't go according to plan. Does that make sense? I learned that from being in Africa. I'm in West Africa, 44 degrees Celsius. I get in this uh, car, 11 people, including myself. They don't speak English. It's all translated. We're going down this dirt road, going to look for animals, wild animals. And inside the car, there's no floorboards. You can see the ground. The fan belt was dental floss and pantyhose. We had to push start the car. And as we're going down the road, if any of you ever been to Africa, you know the potholes are the size of small children because they get flash floods and rains and storms there. As we're going down the road, we hit a pothole. As we hit the pothole, we blow the front driver's side tire. And it's starting, in a couple of hours, it's going to start to get dusk and dark. And in Africa, within 10, 15 minutes, it goes from daylight to pitch black. And we blow the tire in the car. How many of you ever read the book called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Dr. Stephen Covey? Do you remember one of the habits called, um, he talks about the paradigm shift? How many of you are familiar with paradigm shift transformation? So I understand that intellectually. But if you ask me to go into a group of kids and explain to them, I couldn't understand, I couldn't explain what a paradigm shift is or a transformation. I don't know how to articulate those words. So I'm in this car, we blow the driver's side tire, and I think, oh my gosh, we're almost out of water. Nobody speaks English except for myself. We can't go to a farm. There's no roadside assistance. There's no 911. We can't go to anybody nearby. And I realized at that moment that nobody's coming to rescue me. Nobody. So I go through a SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. I go through benefits and drawbacks. I start to look at profiling people. Who's the leader? Who's the follower? If we have to eliminate somebody. All these different things I'm going through in my, my assessment and analysis. Then I realize. What are we going to do? No one's coming to rescue us. The driver gets out of the car, very calm guy, and he walks around the back of the car and he goes into the ditch and he starts pulling dead grass out of the ditch. This goes on for 10, 15, 20 minutes. Everybody's very calm. I'm freaking out inside. I think, wild animals, we're almost out of water, I, I, nobody speaks English, there's no roadside assistance, there's no 911, I don't know what to do. The driver then goes ahead, he pops open the trunk of the car, he pulls out a machete knife, he then goes around to the driver's side of the tire, he starts taking the knife, he starts cutting open the cavity, the cavity of the tire, and starts stuffing grass into the tire. He filled the entire cavity of the tire full of grass, we got back in the car and we drove down the road. It took a little longer, and at that moment I had a paradigm shift. I had a transformation, and I realized that there's always a way if you're committed. That if you got into the problem, there's a way to get out of the problem. Because in my law mindset, my, my perspective on life growing up in North America was that what are we going to do? All of our options have been used up. There's no 911, there's no roadside assistance, there's no gas station, <laughs> there's no farm. No, we can't call it, there's no mobile phone service, there's no satellite phone service, nobody's coming, there's no money for a spare tire, they don't have that. Nobody's coming to get us. Does that make sense? 
And so when you realize that if you're in a problem or a challenge right now, realize that you're on track for something big in your life, which is something great. So as you leave tonight, realize that you can make a difference. You can make a difference. Realize that you're going to have fear. You're going to have doubt. You're going to have worry. And there's going to be times where you have to pull away from everybody and spend time on yourself, whether it's in prayer, it's in meditation, to focus on yourself and saying, I'm going to get through this. And you'll be amazed at what you can accomplish in your life. I'm living proof from a guy who barely passed public high school to multiple suicide attempts in my life to doing things in my life I never ever dreamed possible. But I believe it now because I've done it. And now I start realizing there's more and more things I can do in my life. And you can do the same thing. I'm, a, I'm an example of someone who was not supposed to go far in life. Not supposed to amount to much. Not supposed to do much in my life. But I've done it because of perseverance and massive action, peaks and valleys, but committing to not giving up and doing whatever it takes and making things non-negotiable at times. So have a great night, everyone. It's been a pleasure to be here. Thank you.